actual stats. But uh, eight times out of ten, they're going to have it locked up. You're probably going to get pinned. So these are things. Rule number one, he has a cradle locked up on me. Rule number one, we got to attack the hands. Okay? We can get these hands split. As soon as we're splitting these hands, we're straightening our bodies out, getting our head as far away from our knee as possible. So one thing you need for a cradle is head close to the knee. So we're attacking the hands and taking away the one thing they need. Alright? Say they got it locked up. I can't get these hands out. I'm in a weird position here. It comes to get side to side. This is just something I can catch people with. I look to. If I get cradled, if someone catches a cross face on me, is I like to try and bait them into stepping out front. I didn't notice earlier. I uh, I said try not to step out front side and follow in front of this leg. It's because kids will catch it here. When they catch it here, I'm gonna slide this arm out. Okay, catch it here. Post this backhand here. We're sitting. All right. Right now, as long as he keeps this locked, he's still in control. All right. He won't get a count because I'm I'm the one in control. But he is the one that technically has control. He's still on top and with his two. I don't get a reversal here until he freaks out. Someone starts yelling. He's flat. Now I'm getting my two. I'm getting my back points right here. The best thing to do in that position is expose his back. Make him feel uncomfortable. If he's supposed to be pinned, he's gonna let that go. He's not gonna keep holding on to that. Mm -hmm. right, one more time. Um, I look to catch this. Slip this arm back. Driving in. Right. Driving in, elevating this leg, keeping this leg elevated. If I, got, if I can come in underneath right here, this is even better. I, I like the toe. I don't mind grabbing the toes. And then, Okay, and then you know, one thing that kind of adds up the freak out, freak out factor is when you're grabbing that shoulder and pushing it down to the mat. That's when you'll really get him freaking out, get him going. Okay, if you can get a two near fall out of that, I mean, that's awesome. But uh, it's not necessarily a tight move, and so much commotion going on when you're in a position like that that a ref doesn't usually look to count the near fall there for you. All right. That's the defense for the cross cross face. On my defense for the inside cradle, a little unconventional, All right? If you got this arm caught, this was a must. I mean, obviously, first things first, we're looking to fight the hands, all right, and extend our bodies. As a coach, I, you'll always hear me yell plank, plank, fight the hands and plank, all right? Hitting our plank challenge right away if I have to. But say I can't get those hands, all right, this arm has to come out. This arm, all right, this arm is going to come to this tricep right here, all right, and this hand is going to come up over top. I'm going to hit oh, like a short fireman, like a, imagine me in a front headlock, short fireman. This is come down, and this hand is going to shoot over top so he can't roll me through. And this is why I'm sitting. Not high percentage, but... I mean, you're in a cradle, and you didn't do anything to knock it in. So just like we did it, the very first thing we did with the cradles, um, he's got me in that cradle. I reach my arm through. You also have a cradle yourself, and you can sit that back for a near side cradle yourself. So just like that rolly drill that we did, keep that in mind when you're there as well. Uh, just be careful because he still has a cradle on you. Um, so it's just a battle of the cradles. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right, three things to work on. Five minutes of uh, just cycling through each.